Hi. So this is a short demonstration on our project called Mini SaaS. So this project is all about building scalable and highly customizable web applications. So let us see how all of these applications can be built. It all starts with <coughs> creating the database, which in turn involves creating objects, or you can call it tables. So you can create your own objects or tables and you can also reuse the tables which have been provided by the SaaS provider or other tenants and you can also customize the available objects <coughs> okay so that's about the database then you can add the services to repository and use them to compose your application you can also reuse the services which have been provided by the SaaS vendor or other tenants for building their own applications then how do you find these services so this has been solved by using service ontology so what you do is when you want to build a certain workflow you just search by the keywords which you need to <coughs> build the workflow for example if you want to build a checkout workflow then you just search using term checkout or shopping and then the service ontology will return you back with a group of services which are related to the checkout workflow and then you can use them according to your the behavior of your application and build your workflow then you can also customize the <coughs> predefined workflows which the maybe the SaaS vendor has provided or some other tenants have provided as per the use in your application so all of this really helps in reusability of services or the objects and hence you can easily build your application in a short span of time okay okay so this is the main interface for our application mini SaaS. this is the login page where the tenant or the SaaS vendor logs in and performs all the operations on either the database layer or the workflow layer or what he wants yeah so <coughs> first of all the tenant needs to be registered so let us see how we can register so for example we are creating a tenant for sun devil store so Okay, so the tenant has been registered. Now, when you log in, so this tenant has been logged in into the SaaS, and he can now perform operations on the database layer and the workflow layer. He can create his own objects. He can fill in the data for all those objects, browse his objects, and all of those things. So in this demonstration, I'll be going, I'll be showing you building applications for two stores, Sundial Store and UCLA Store. So the basic objects that are needed are books, laptops, a cart, a discount table, and all of such objects. So as all of these objects are common. It makes sense to add those, all of those objects as part of the SaaS provider so all the tenants can use that. So we'll just add all those objects using the administrator. Okay, so this is the administrator console. Now he adds objects saying items which may be laptops or books. So we have a basic object called items the field name for the first thing is item id which can be an integer add field and then there is a item type which is a string and then you have a, an image associated with that item and the price for that item when we 
say create object that object gets created and we can see that object from this console so right now our object is empty so let's fill in some data into that item okay yeah here it comes so first of all the item ID so one the price associated with that so if this is a book the book may be around ten dollars and image associated with that We just inserted a row. Let's check out if that has been added to the table. Yeah, it is. So let us now add some more objects. Same books. Field name is item ID. And then there is title for that book. An author. category okay so here goes our group object let's define laptops object item id and then there comes the model for that laptop Finally, the RAM for that. Okay, so just to confirm if those objects were created, we would search this and this. Okay, so here are the items laptops and books. Okay, let's add some data to books. The item ID is one, the author is say JK Rogues. Fiction. The title is Harry Potter. Okay. Now let's add one row to the laptops table. Dell. Item I use two. Then the model is Dell Inspiron. Processes into it and the RAM is 4 GB. DDR3. Okay. So now the laptop table object has some data, books has some data. Okay, now. So this was a part of the administrator. Now, if the tenant wants to log in, so send a store. And see if those objects are visible to him. Just go to objects, laptops. Okay, so all of the objects are visible to him, but data is not visible to him because he's a different tenant. So if he adds some data as a part of his organization the data will be visible to him so for example we add an item saying item 3 range is slash price is ten dollars and this is a book he inserts that row and browses the objects find it on items okay so this item is visible to him now so you can see the data is isolated from all the tenants but the objects are visible to all of them so they, that they can reuse those objects and if they create some objects as a part of their organization it will be visible to them so let us see if we have some object like that so if Sundial store wants to have discount coupons which UCLA store won't be having the Sundial store will define an object saying discount coupons which will be coupon 
id integer and this count which can be float or maybe integer will have it as percentage okay so this the object gets created and it is visible to him now this count the object doesn't have data yet so let us see if this object is visible to the administrator no because this object is specific to the tin send will start okay okay so that was about creating <coughs> objects and adding data to it so now let's see how do we manipulate those objects so this is the console for adding fields to an existing object so if you want to add some field to say books object saying <coughs> the publisher for that book just say a new field type for that add that field now let's see if that field has been updated yeah the publisher is there in this new object now if you want to update some fields so change the name of a field <coughs> So for example, in laptops, we want to say, we want to rename the brand as the company for that laptop. It's updated. Let's check. Yeah, the field name for that has been changed. Now, if the tenant wants to delete some object, he's got the screen to delete an object, but at this point of time, we don't want to delete any object. So let's stick with what we have. Then you can also delete fields. So if you want to delete a field from an object, just select that field category. You want to delete the fields in category. We don't want to categorize our object. So our, our books. Just delete that. Okay, so it reflected. So this is all about manipulation of the objects. Now we have implemented all of these manipulations as web services. So all of the things, creating an object, updating an object, deleting some field from that object, deleting data from that object, all of those are provided as web services. And using those these web services, you can manipulate all of these things into your application by just connecting to these services and giving it appropriate data. So if you want to fetch all the data from an object, you say get data, which specifies the organization ID that you belong to and the object name. So it fetches all the data related to that object specific to your organization then you can also get data with some predefined fields or some search criteria so for example if you want to specify saying all reason all the books of particular name or having some particular data in it then you can specify that criteria in this web service and get all the data you can also get all the, the, the table structure, the schema, all of those can be um, <coughs> integrated into your application using these services. Okay, so now let's get started with the service layer of our SaaS implementation. So <coughs> you can add, you can publish your services into our SaaS application and this will get stored into the ontology database which is uh, i'll discuss how the ontology has been implemented now okay so the ontology consists of a set of services which are linked to some tags and some category so a service can fall under one category and it can have many tags which can be used to search that service so for example if you have a service saying make payment so it can fall under <coughs> the category of shopping and uh, it may have tags saying shopping 
check out payment <coughs> like and then using all of these tags we link these services so for example if you search a service saying checkout so you get all the services that are related to checkout saying make payment and then shipping it validating the credit card all those kind of services get into the result set now let us see how the services are added into the ontology so we we'll add some services that are related to checkout As you can see, when you try to add services, it asks you about the service description, a category in which the service falls, and some tags related to that service. You can specify the description of the service. Now. So this service is calculate total. So we'll write the description accordingly. This falls under the category of I would say banking and tags maybe banking then it can be checkout add to cart yeah and apply coupon this is applies shopping tags can be discount then add to cart then it can be total and so on Service will add applies tax to the total amount the shopping so this can be the banking check out. verify credit card sorry this service verifies the credit card to be used it can fall under the category sorry. can have tags banking Check out so this charges the cost against the total amount. in banking then it can add to cart 
shop name and check out yeah so now all these services got stored into the database this is the workflow creation page and uh, this is under the admin section because we are going to develop a workflow saying checkout it makes more sense to have checkout as a workflow provided by the SaaS provider because many of the tenants will be using this workflow as per their applications need and they can customize it as they want it so let's design this workflow as a part of admin let's give it a name saying checkout sunday assign it a name add inputs that are needed in the workflow organization id is needed customer id is needed then you need coupon code you need tax rate you need custom credit card number CVC for the credit card and expiry date for the credit card. And let's search for the services which are related to checkout workflow. This is and the services will be searched on the basis of service ontology to which we added service in the previous phases by specifying categories and uh, tags related to that service and also the description that the service had let us try to find out what services are there which are related to checkout so these are the list of services which are more or less related to checkout and you can use the services which you want as per your need in your checkout workflow so first of all i'll take calculate total Calculate total has two inputs. The first input being the organization ID and the second is the customer ID. Add it to the workflow. Then the second step of the workflow can be apply coupon. So let's get this. The first parameter is organization ID. The second is the total calculated by the previous step. third is the coupon code and the fourth is customer id add it to the workflow the next step can be apply tax so apply tax has three inputs first is organization id the second is the output of the previous phase which is apply coupon and the third is the customer id add it to the workflow the final step can be charging the customer against his total which is charge credit card let's add this to the workflow this has five inputs the first being organization id the second is credit card number the third is expiry date and the fourth is Sorry, the third is CVC, fourth is expiry date, and the last one is total, which is the output of previous phase, which is apply tax. Add to workflow. Now this workflow has four steps in it. Let's commit this workflow. Okay, so this has been added to the database now let's try to log in as another tenant saying UCLA ok so we have successfully logged in now let's try to see what this workflow as a from the perspective of this tenant let's try to customize that workflow So this is the list of workflows that are 
available for this tunnel to customize let's try to give it a new name say check out ucla say customize so this workflow gets replicated so that you can customize this workflow as part of your application Checkout UCLA is now available to customize. Let's edit it. Okay, so that was the checkout workflow for Sundell store. Now let us see how the customization can be done for another tenant, say UCLA. So let us delete the apply coupon step from the workflow that was there in the Sundell store. And let's see how it is done. So we're logging as UCLA, CLA we go to the customize tab where you first of all select the workflow that you want to customize and you ch select checkout sun devil so you can give it a new name saying checkout ucla and say customize so the workflow gets replicated and then you can load that workflow then refresh it okay so you can load that workflow by saying edit now all the steps in the workflow get displayed here with the corresponding inputs and outputs for that workflow now you can delete any of the workflow that you want to delete sorry the steps in the workflow and then save the workflow as per your convenience so let us see how we can edit it so i don't want the apply coupon step for ucla store so that step got deleted and now calculate total is followed by apply tax and then charge credit card and now we just need to change the parameter for apply tax as the output of calculate total because we deleted apply coupon step and we just say save that workflow got saved you can also add an operation in between a workflow by using this interface where you just select the position you where you want to add this new workflow sorry a new service or operation so let's say I want, re want, I want to reapply the apply coupon operation at the second step just need to specify the inputs to that operation and say add to workflow so see it got added but I don't want to commit this workflow at this point of time so I'll just leave it this way if you comment it it will be saved like that So, and then if you want to execute in workflow just select the workflow say load and you get all the inputs for that workflow and say execute the workflow will be executed and an output will be shown the portion below okay so that was about building all the database and workflows for the applications that are to be built this is sun devil store which has been built using the mta database layer and uh, the workflows using various services so let us log in to sun devil bookstore successfully logged in let us browse through the laptops available these are the laptops
laptops available. Let's see, add to cart to the SP ROM. Browse through books. Let's see, add one Harry Potter. Let us test the search functionality. View the cart. Okay, so we have two items in our cart. Let us see checkout. Okay, so now this is the workflow that we had designed using the mini SAS application. Now let us try to execute that workflow using real time data. Okay, so the workflow are executed and the order ID got generated along with the total and all the application of coupon and tax. So this is a complete application built using mini SaaS. Now let us see the second application which is almost similar to the other application but its database is different and its workflows are different from the one we just saw. So let us see what is the difference. Yeah. So as you can see the data is different for both of them. The books database is different. And then let us try to Add some books into cart and laptop. Let's view the cart. Yeah. And we say check out. As you can see, this application didn't have the coupon to apply discount to the total of items. So the UI doesn't show any coupon card ID. Let's execute this workflow using actual data. Okay, so as you can see, this is the order summary without any discount coupon applied. So thus we can modify a single workflow and use it in different applications and use a single database to support multiple applications with data specific to those applications but the framework is same for both of them